Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Satisfactory. And uh, this game, this this game right here, uh, it's it's addictive, but it's also extremely frustrating, especially for someone like me, who, uh, if you've been paying attention in the series, this is the first real factory building style game I've really played. So as far as all the logistics of having all these resources and creating production chains and making other tiers of resources and rerouting things to get other tiers of resources and re-rerouting things to get other tiers of resources or side tiers of resources to then merge into other tiers of and, uh, this is where the frustration comes from. Because I want everything to just be perfect and organized and simple and succinct. And I think it's just gonna work. And then I start trying to plan it out and map it out. And then nothing turns out the way I want it to. And that's what I've been trying to do in between the last episode and this episode. So you may notice that there are some changes. Things look a little bit different. The first thing being in this huge wall of storage, which I'll explain in a minute. And the second thing being the second floor over here has things on it. Oh, and then also I almost forgot we got this stuff happening over here and oh, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed, which is why I'm trying to explain that this is frustratingly addictive because I want to I want to make it better. I want to make it perfect. I want it to be the best thing it can be. But I just I can't. Are you serious? Did we just run out of how did we run out of power? I've I've added so much power. What? Why are we out of power? This was not part of the plan. I had more than enough. Uh, before I explain what's happening, I need to get power back. Let me let me see here. How did this happen? What happened here? We lost power along here somewhere. Hold on. I've added a bunch more of these coal things, by the way. Um, so let me just... I'm going to take a look at the line here. Maybe the coal... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do we have going on here? We have a backup of coal. It should all continue down the line and fill in this guy down here. Apparently, apparently this guy is running out of fuel. You know what we should do? We should reroute this then. This should come, this should be routed off of the end. Yeah, okay, I know how to do this. We gotta prevent the coal from coming out of here too early down in the chain. And this is gonna be the last resort to reroute into our, uh, I think this is going to the truck station. So we'll just have this can't afford- are you serious? I can't afford just this last little bit here? Okay, no worries. This gives me an opportunity, actually, to explain a little bit of what I've been doing here. And all the coal that I just got, I'll split this- oh, no, I wanted to split it. Hold on. So I'll split some of it into there, just to give it a little bit of excess. Some of it into there. And please tell me you have some to- oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, and I did reroute a portion of it this way as well for reasons which I will also explain. There's a lot to explain. There's a lot to explain between last episode and this episode. But that should work its way down the line, I hope. I really hope so. Okay, so we need to get ourselves some plates so we can continue that other part of the conveyor line. And uh, I'll explain. So over here... I can grab myself some plates, plenty of plates, uh, right here. So what this is, and I'll grab some more stuff out of here, too. I've rerouted all of the, our chaos factory down over here. We had this producing all of the basic materials, uh, which you can see the concrete. You can see wire. You can see we got plates coming in down here. We got rods there. And then up there, I think we have screws followed by cables. I decided rather than having that all being stored... Um, in a very messy area where I can't really expand my storage. I was like, let's just put it all together somewhere else. So then each one of these layers is just a whole bunch of storage units leading into each other to just start stockpiling a whole bunch more of all the basic materials from over there. And I thought that was just going to be a more organized way to keep a stockpile of this stuff, which is working so far. So that allows me to just come over here and grab whatever I need whenever I need it in a nice, easy, uh, organized way. 
And then now that we have these plates, we're gonna be able to reconnect this conveyor belt and check on the things going on here. All right, so this conveyor belt needs to connect right there. And then that should refeed some coal back to our truck station. And I feel like um, we're no longer receiving enough coal from that miner up there. So we might have to change it into a miner mark two, which I actually have access to now. Okay, so I updated you on the big wall of storage. Now I need to update you on some other things before we continue along our frustratingly addicting process here. So the other thing that I've done is I've started some steel production because we really, really need it. So I reroded some coal, as you can see, from this coal production area that was feeding into all these coal generators. I rerouted some of it, as you can see, out through here, and oh, I got an idea. We don't need, do we need that much? Is that going in at a constant rate? No, this pauses. This pauses, which means maybe I might be able to reroute some of this back into this line. So a smaller fraction will be going out that way. And then a larger fraction will be going into our coal generators. So we no longer have that dip, hopefully. All right, let us observe. So now we have less coal going this way, but I'm hoping that it's not going to hinder the progress of the steel production too much. And then we have more coal feeding down there. All right, that should be good. Yeah, so these are Mark II conveyor belts feeding down from the top there because we have a pure coal node. So it is feeding 120 per minute going down into all of these guys. So yeah, this is looking decent. As you can see, some of the coal is being rerouted over here. We got some iron being rerouted from those iron nodes into here producing steel ingots. And then these steel ingots are being fed here because we actually need some excess storage of steel ingots um, for various other things. And then some of them are being routed into this constructor to make steel beams because steel beams are what we need to make conveyor belt mark three, which I have unlocked. I have unlocked storage tier two and conveyor belt mark three since the last episode which means that we have unlocked literally everything that we currently have access to in our tiers up to tier four. And I get some more news, more news based off of this too. We are, we're ready for phase two. We're going to be activating phase two in this episode. Um, I have it all, I have all the parts already. I spent a lot of time just handcrafting all of the parts for the space elevator storage. And it is in the storage. I just have to click launch pretty much. But first, what happened over here? What have we done over here? So you may remember that I was trying to get organized with this series of production here. And my my initial plan, which after thinking about things more, I realized is probably not going to work. My initial plan was to have a floor like this for every individual part. Because right now I'm making two constructors with iron plates, two constructors with iron rods, two constructors with wire, all coming from a single iron source. And I thought, what if we have an entire floor of wire, an entire floor of rods, an entire floor of plates, an entire floor of screws, of cable, and so on. And um, it would just be laid out like this and just having a bunch of constructors doing all that. And I realized I'm wasting a lot of space here with just unnecessary storage. I was thinking that if there's any backup, we could just have it all come back into storage like these things are, and then we would just have a bunch. Oh, wow, it's actually kind of working that way. So we have a bunch of stuff, just excess that we can pull from whenever we need it. But uh, I don't think that's the best thing. I really don't think that's the best thing. So I decided to give it another try up here in which I have it go directly into smelters instead of storage first. And then these smelters just go directly into constructors since we don't really need iron ingots as far as I know. And then these constructors, um, then they are going into some storage systems to store what they are producing. And then I figured this layout right here works. We can do this. It seems pretty efficient. It seems like it's feeding a lot of stuff through here. But the problem is I wanted it to be one floor of this per basic material because in a perfect world, in a perfect, satisfactory, satisfyingly satisfactory world, I would have 
all of my iron ore based products just being produced independently. So a floor dedicated to iron plates, iron rods, wire, uh, cable, screws. And I think those are all of the things that are sourced directly from iron ore at its base level. And then I realized I'm going to use up too much iron nodes on that and we're not going to have nearly enough room for steel. Because the problem with steel is it requires iron ore. So if all of my iron ore is going towards this stuff, I need I need even more to go for the steel stuff. And this is where I got frustratingly overwhelmed and addicted. And I'm still, I don't know what to do. I'm drowning in perfectionism because I just want everything to be perfect. So where I'm at now is I am stuck trying to figure out how to keep a solid influx of all the basic stuff while still leaving room for an entire steel production which has to use some of the basic stuff that I need to create some of the basic stuff. So just when I think I can make everything linear and just feed next into the next into the next, all of the different layers start having to intermingle and, it's, and it messes up my entire game plan. Have you guys experienced this? If, am I the only one here? Am I the only one that experiences this level of, of um, overwhelming frustration? And yet, at the same time, overwhelming motivation to just fix the problem? Okay, so it looks like... Oh no, this is bad. It looks like my storage is about to fill up. I have five storages um, of this stuff. Oh, this one isn't filling up quite yet. The plates are apparently producing slower than the rods. Yeah, because right now this floor is just for rods and plates. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next yet. But uh, before we do any of this stuff, let's go to the space elevator and let's overwhelm ourselves even more by going into the next phase when we're still not ready for the steel phase. Yeah, we are definitely stuck in the steel phase right now because I'm still trying to organize my, um, my basic tier one materials. And uh, we need to we need to start getting some real steel production going, but um, I managed to just manually build all of these rotors or motors, motors or rotors? I forget which ones. Here, yeah, motors. Built 150 motors and 500 modular frames at the workbench by hand. That took a very long time, but it's here. We are ready for tier five and six. I decided to save it live for the episode we're gonna seal and then we're going to send okay new project assembly framework oh no this is just gonna give me a whole new tier of production that i am just not ready for because i'm back in the stone age right now I'm in the stone age and I've just like shot myself into like the technology age, I think. All right, let's go ahead and check out our hub here. And here we go. Teal oil processing, industrial manufacturing, expanded power, <gasps> jetpack and gas mask. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's take a look one at a time. Oil processing. All right, oil pump. Oh man, we got, we got to get these things automated because we're not even close right now. This stuff we got down pretty well so far. Well, not really. It's in our in our chaos section. We have it down pretty well. We still need to make an organized version of that. So oil pump tracks crude oil from the oil node. We can scan for crude oil once we unlock this milestone. Circuit boards, fuel. Oh man, lots more materials. Industrial manufacturing. A manufacturer crafts three or four parts into another part. Woo, that's going to add for some complexity. Trucks, 48 slot inventory, built-in craft bench. All right. So that's that's definitely going to be an upgrade to our tractors. Computer, complex logic machine that is used to control advanced behavior in machines. Okay. Is that like a resource that we have to produce probably? Let's go into tier six. Expand it. Oh, no. We got to make computers and heavy modular frames. Oh, no. Fuel generator conveyor belt mark four. Wow. 450 resources per minute. Oh man. And we're probably gonna have to have like a whole more difficult 
space resource just to build these. Consumes fuel to generate electricity from your power grid. It has an input, so feeding fuel can be automated. All right, I'm assuming that we could probably make that from the crude oil. So crude oil nodes are going to be the next big thing. All right, what do we need for jetpack? Complicated stuff that I can't make, make yet. And five inventory slots. Oh, I want those so bad. Allows you to move more freely in the air. Consumes fuel when used and refills with fuel from your inventory when you're on the ground. Oh, you can't refuel when you're in the air. Interesting. All right, gas mask. Look at that. Allows you to breathe normally in poison gas. That's useful. Consumes filters from your inventory when you are in poison gas. All right. Um, so yeah, we are just totally not ready for any of this stuff. So I think what we really got to focus on, we got to really get our base materials organized so we can feed them into steel production factories. So this whole bottom floor was a draft that needs to be redone. I don't know how I'm going to do that because we have a ton of excess material down here. And we need to recreate this type of floor in various other places. And oh, let me check. Let me show you what I've done up here, actually. So you can see. Oh, boy, this is actually kind of difficult. Uh, OK, there we go. So you can see I've got um, all of this feeding in, I think, from a single. I'm too slow. I'm too slow for this. Ugh. This is all coming in from, I believe, a single mine. And it's a Mark II mine, um, and it is producing... Oh, yeah, it's overclocked to produce 180 per minute. So we have uh, Mark III conveyor belts we're feeding into storage here. It's still backing up a little bit, which means that even though it's producing 180 per minute, and it's being fed into... Here, we'll follow it up here. It's producing 180 per minute, and it is being fed into six separate directions. This breaks off into 90 that way, 90 that way, which breaks off into 30 by 30 by 30, 30 by 30 by 30, which then goes into, what is here? What is this? Oh, I can use that. So then each of these 30 goes into these smelters, which can take in 30. So that should be like 100% efficiency. Yep. This is broken up into two groups of three, three smelters and three smelters. One group of three is producing plates and one group of three is producing rods which you can then see is routed like this into these storages, which all gets merged and then brought, oh, this is all full now, uh-oh. This all gets merged into here, which then gets split into these two things of storage and then these two things of storage. And my, my thinking was, the idea is that we're gonna have these rods get split into an area where they just get stored as rods. So we can have rods building up in storage. But then we also have them split into an area where they can get exported into the next tier of production because I think rods need to be um, routed to make screws. So yeah, that's my current thinking. Um, I would like to replace all of these with tier two of storage. And then another possibility is uh, this splitter here, it's got three ways. So we got two going back into storage. We could have a third option here going somewhere else. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of possibilities here, but um, I don't know if this is ideal or not, to be honest. We can automate pipes. Yeah, see, we need ingots just for pipes here. Should I split? I should split this. Oh, <gasps> I should totally split this. This is backed up right now. Yes. All right, look at that. Progress. We got progress going. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to build a level three identical to level two. And we are going to essentially reroute what we have going into level one up into level three. The question is, what do we want to actually be produced at that level because here we have rods and plates the only other thing directly from ingots is wire so i'm actually thinking what if we have both wire and rods because rods goes into screws and wire goes into cable so it might be better to have an extra thing of rods it's really hard for me to choose sometimes on which ones i want but you know what the first thing is first we need to calculate our um count up how much of these we have on every level. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six smelters. So I'm just gonna add to my to-do list everything I've done here and add it to the next level. All right, I just added everything I needed to the list other than belts because I don't really know how to count belts in particular. Um, and we already have everything on us. 
So I guess we'll start with this. And I think that's where we can place the next set of foundations. Yep. So I'll actually start with the walls, though. So we need another conveyor three going up there. And there. I'm not really going to close in the walls just yet because I kind of want accessibility around everything in case I want to, like, jump out of here or whatever. But this at least tells me where the next level is going to start, which is right up there. Okay, so I got the whole floor built. So now the tough part is figuring out where exactly I placed everything. I think I started with the constructors, actually. And I just placed the constructors side by side starting from here because the constructors are wider than the smelters so i just had the smelters line up with the constructors yeah it looks like that's what i did is the constructors are just side by side as close as they can go all right yeah so i'll just start with the constructors i just gotta make sure that they're on the same level all right constructors are lined up now we gotta see where the smelters line up in comparison oh that's bad out where the smelters line up in comparison to the constructors all right the back leg lines up on the groove here that is it right there yep there we go so now we just got to keep that lined up with every constructor okay i got this all right there we go smelters are installed now we just gotta route all of the conveyors to the respective smelters there we are and now we need to figure out what are we putting in front of all these constructors all right i think we have all of our storages hooked up and now we just gotta put all the conveyor belts in and i think this is going to be an identical replica of the floor below. All right, so now we have the issue of I wanted to feed this up there, but it's too steep. So I think I might make a trade. I think I might feed this one up there and then this one up there. Then we'll take our conveyor belt Mach 3 and please fit too steep. Oh, no. We cannot do too steep. Oh, no. Okay, okay, this is bad. I wasn't expecting that to be too steep. That means we gotta we gotta source this from even further back and look how far back that goes. <gasps> Alright, no, this is fine. This is fine. This just means we need to build ourselves a really tall conveyor pole right where this connection used to be. That should be acceptable, right? So we can build from there to there. And then from there, we can go back to where it was. Please, please work. To there. Yes. Okay, now it is feeding up to the top. Good, good, good. All right, now let's hope that it's not too steep to go from here to there. It's going to be too steep, isn't it? It's just going to make things difficult for me. All right, mark two from there. Oh, it's too steep. Okay. Okay, that just means we need to circle it around a little bit. All right, I've never done this before, so I don't exactly know the best way to do it, but I'm assuming I can just put these things next to each other like this, and that will allow me to feed a circular belt going as high as we can go before it's too steep. There we go. And then uh, there, and then this one goes up to there and then that is not too steep oh there we go look at that that worked can i hop on this no it's not gonna feed me through there dang it all right well i can climb up to the top here all right so now i think unfortunately this factory i think is now receiving less than it was before and then this factory is going to re be receiving the higher amount so let's actually go up top and get a more aerial view of this i'll even put a look lookout tower up here and then we can get a better view of what's going on. Yeah, so you can see a clear, clear difference in the amount that is getting fed up here versus the amount getting fed from down there. Which actually, is that just the difference between a Mark III? Maybe if we change that to Mark III. I don't know if it is actually going to receive more than that, though. Let's go check on some, um, let's go check on some rates. All right, this seems to be receiving a little bit more. Let's change this to Mark III and see how this does. Okay, there we go. Now they are receiving identical amounts. And I think we got things going. Let's go check out on our export production rate into the uh, into the storage up on this level. All right, we got a bunch of rods and we got a bunch of copper wire. Excellent. 
All right, so we've reached another level of producing our basic stuff. We're working on replacing everything that's happening over there, feeding over into these storage units. And what I think we can eventually do is, uh, since all of these are producing out here, this is essentially organizing things into output sections. So we can have a one output of rods going from there, one output of rods going from there, and cables and plates and so on. So we can actually have an output directly into storage, just like we have over there but in a more organized fashion. And then um, the other outputs going into the next level of production, like screws and cable and stuff like that. So yeah, we're, this is, it's happening. This is, this is stuff that's happening. So please remember, I have not played factory games other than this really. So this is all just me trying to figure it out as I go. I'm definitely a noob when it comes to this kind of stuff. So constructive uh, feedback is always appreciated. If you have something useful to say, then I take that into account. If we're mean about it, I don't really pay that much attention to it, so it's not a good way to get your point across. Anyway, I'm looking forward to your feedback. I've lowered the frustration a little bit now that we've got all the basic things going here and um, just working my way up to steel because we need have a whole nother tier ahead of us. The frustration's back. Never mind. You know what? what? Go, go watch Go watch this video. Just leave this video. Go watch this one instead. It's just... It, it's not this one. I'm Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.